Welcome to Tech Notice. This over here is the best greater motherboard for Intel's 12th gen processors. And I know what you're thinking. You're thinking, wait a second, didn't you just make another video about the best greater motherboard for the Intel's 12th gen? Well, there is one issue with that. Intel's 12th gen has DDR4 and DDR5 specific motherboards. Most of the motherboards are DDR5 and DDR5 is as hard to find as GPUs. In fact, it's probably more rare than GPUs. So the DDR4 motherboards are the best motherboards we can go for now because the 12th gen processors are very good, but also the DDR4 memory is super, super cheap right now. So going with the DDR4 motherboard for the 12th gen, so Z690 motherboard is a great, great idea. And this one over here is one of them. And this is, believe me, the best DDR4 motherboard for Intel's 12th gen. Let's talk. Are you sick of seeing activate Windows message on your desktop? Well, it's time to activate your Windows and do it cheap. Go on to whokeys.com where you can find official license keys. If you're looking for Windows 10 Pro key, for example, then all you have to do is search for Windows 10 Pro, select the license and add it to the basket. Use the code TN20 to get a 20% discount. Once you have the license key on your email, click here, here, type in your license key, hit activate and you're all done. Check out whokeys.com in the description below and don't forget to use the code TN20 to get a 20% discount. So then, what is this motherboard over here? This is the Gigabyte AeroG Z690 DDR4. But if you remember, we did an AMD version of this motherboard review on our channel and that was very impressive. So let's have a look at this motherboard then and some of the features and why this is the best. So. Let's take the motherboard out. We have our user manual, which is super, super helpful. We have our PS5 style Wi-Fi and Bluetooth antenna. This is a very good antenna actually. Looks very nice and it's got a magnet on the bottom as well. So you can put it on your case, very much like it. We have this probe over here, which is basically a microphone a sensor for your motherboard if you want to adjust the fan speeds inside your PC according to the actual noise levels. We have one, two, three, four M.2 screws and we have two SATA cables. One of them is an unangled one over here and then the other one is straight. So then, this beautiful motherboard then, and you might have noticed that I have something on the side over here. Yes, we have some DDR4 RAM which I think is a perfect fit for this motherboard. This is the Gigabyte Designer, uh, like a creator memory, but basically it is super, super slim looking, gray modules as well that fit with the motherboard design. And I think this is something that you should really be looking to get if you want like a design matched one for this motherboard. These are 32 gigabyte sticks. And as you can see, if we slot them in over here like that, they fit into the DDR4 slots. This is 64 gigabytes and you can have double the amount and get 128 gigabytes of DDR4 over here. This is 3200 megahertz as well. I'm going to leave the link for this in the description as well. They're not so easy to find. If you can find them, oh, it's beautiful. No RGB, just beautiful like silver ones, I love it. So let's start talking through the features of this motherboard. Obviously we have the new LGA 1700 socket over here for the Intel 12th gen processors, but let's start from the top over here. We have the CPU power connectors or EPS power, four plus eight pin. We have some fan headers over here. On the top over here, we have CPU fan and optical fans, but all of the fan headers are exactly the same. We have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight headers, and they're all exactly the same. 24 watts, two amperes, and you can control PWM from the BIOS, everything's the same. Then we have some RGB headers on the top over here. We have a one five volt and one 12 volt, and we have two more in the bottom over here, exactly the same, one five volt and one 12 volt over here. Then moving on on the side over here, we have a 24 pin ATX power over here, which interestingly is moved quite on top of the motherboard. Usually it's somewhere around here, so it's somewhere over here. We have a USB type A port over here, 
which is five gigabits in speed. This is for the front panel header. We have a USB-C front panel header over here, which is 20 gigabits in speed. We have some Thunderbolt headers over here for the add-in card for Gigabyte. If you wanna get an add-in card from Gigabyte, you need those ports over here. And then this over here is the sensor for the, the microphone that we had inside the box over here. If you want, you can plug the microphone inside over there. Six SATA ports over here. Reset switch on the motherboard. Interestingly enough, no power on switch, but a reset switch on the motherboard. Then we have a front panel header over here and then a clear seamless two headers on there if you want to clear the seamless. Then we have a temperature prone over here as well. So there's two temperature headers over here. If you want to put uh, one of the temperature sensors in there, there's two of them over here if you want to measure the temperature in different parts of your motherboard. We have a Q flash button over here, which means that this motherboard can update the BIOS without the CPU or RAM. So you can update the BIOS just on the USB over there. We have two USB 2.0 headers on the bottom over here and then front panel header over here and then some other stuff that you know most people don't use. Let's move on to the M.2 headers and PCIe slots over here. As you can see, this top slot over here, which is silver and white inside, is PCIe 5.0 rated, but it also is backwards compatible for PCIe 4 and 3, so on. This is a X16 slot, but these two on the bottom over here are PCIe 3.0, and they might look like full-size PCIe, like X16 slots, but they are actually X4 slots, so the pins actually end over here. So this motherboard can't run two GPUs in your system. Let's unscrew the heat sinks and look underneath. By the way, interesting thing I just realized is that this motherboard has two separate screws and these bottom screws over here are very, very fine um, screw head. So it's not even Phillips one, it's like the smaller one. You need like a very small screwdriver to get those screws off. It's smaller than the M.2 screw that's inside the case as well. We have the big heatsink over here and then the small heatsink over here. So four M.2 slots, all of them are PCIe 4.0 capable. We only have one-sided thermal pads no, underneath as well that you can see on some of the higher end gigabyte motherboards. No standoffs for SSDs that have, you know, just the one-sided uh, chips on the M.2s. So none of those standoffs either. All of them are long, so you can put like the super long M.2 slots like the Intel opt-in memory if it's 110 millimeters then you can do that over here the interesting thing is that all of them are nvme capable but only the bottom one over here underneath the wi-fi card has sata capability which means if you want to use any of the sata m.2 slots they will only work on the bottom slot. It's good to see the Wi-Fi card and Bluetooth card over here so you can actually change it if you wanted to. But another important thing to note over here is that the bottom M.2 actually shares bandwidth SATA ports two and three. So if the M.2 is occupied over here on the fourth slot, you are gonna lose uh, two and three uh, SATA ports and then you only have four SATA ports left. Okay then, now we're gonna talk about the I.O. of the motherboard. And, and this is where you can see the biggest difference with some of the other motherboards on the same platform. So let's talk about the USB ports and speeds because it can be very confusing, all the labeling and everything. On the top over here, we have two USB 2.0 headers. We have a Wi-Fi and Bluetooth antennas over here. Then we have four blue USB type A ports, which are five gigabits in speed rated. We have a HDMI out port, which comes from you know, your CPU, iGPU. If you have an iGPU, you can use this HDMI port over here. And then we have a display port in, which is the port that comes from your graphics card inside the display port in. And then you can basically have this fake Thunderbolt 4 port, which is this USB-C port next underneath over here. It's labeled with this like little square around the labeling over here. This is where you can get video output also from the USB-C if the DP in has been connected from your graphics card. Usually the Vision Link rated what Gigabit does has 20 gigabits in speed bandwidth as well with the USB-C ports, but this one over here does give you video and 60 watt charging port but it is only 10 gigabits rated in data transfer speeds. On top of that, we have another USB type A port, the red one, and another red one next to it. They are both 10 gigabits in speed rated. We have a 2.5 gigabit LAN port, and then underneath we have another USB-C port. And you'd think it's 10 gigabits in speed, but actually it isn't. It's 20 gigabits in speed because it's USB 3.2 Gen 2 X2 slot, very confusing, but it is basically 20 gigabits in speed. We have optical out over here, 
mic input and then line output. Looks like they've got rid of quite a lot of like the other audio parts over here. Maybe some people are sad. For me, I didn't use them pretty much ever. Let me know if you are one of those who needs those parts and you're sad to not see them over here. But basically because of this IO, this is the best motherboard for the creators as well because there isn't another DDR4 version of the motherboard that can give you, first of all, USB-C video output. There just isn't any available for the 12th gen. And to have two USB-C ports, one of them 20 gigabits and one 10 gigabits, and then lots of fast USB connectivity, that, that that's fine. Now another thing that I would like to see maybe is a 10 gigabit port which you can add on one of those cards on the bottom over there or have another one gigabit port but do you know what this is the best board you can get and if you want like a silver white theme going then this is the only motherboard that you can have. There is some other motherboards from MSI and Gigabyte but they're not as featureful in terms of like IO and other parts and look they've made it quite obvious creativity starts here gigabyte creator series there is an aero g ddr5 version of the same board available exactly the same features as much as i could see online i would go with the ddr4 version because it's just more affordable and your ddr4 is not gonna cost you arm and a leg also there is a vision sorry it's not vision it's aero it's called Aero. I don't know why it's called Aero, by the way. I'm not sure why they like suck the vision name because HP has a laptop series that has an Aero name in there as well, which is a little bit confusing. Gigabyte has an Aero like laptop as well, but anyway. I like the vision name much more, but what I want to say is there is also Aero D version available of this motherboard. Well, it's not the same motherboard. It's like the high-end creator motherboard for Gigabyte series. Hopefully we can get this one in to have a look at that one as well. But this is like a tier down of this, um, like the creator series motherboard. But the Vision D will have like 10 gigabit ethernet and all the bells and whistles. This one is just missing the 10 gigabit ethernet basically, but all the other bits are fantastic. Bear in mind the, the Aero D is also DDR5, so maybe a little bit hard to find the DDR5, but that's it. My question to you is, which uh, build, like series or theme, would you like to see with this motherboard? We have gray over here and silver theme. Which cases, which other things can we use? Let me know in the comments below. As always, likes if you enjoyed this video, subs if you'd like to see more, and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.